German gets up in the middle of the first number, says to me, outside your place, to say the Paradise Club, the best cabaret in New York. That's what it says. And then he walks out. <laughs> I should think you might save some of your raspberries for the one who causes the whole trouble. That's what I say. Next, next. How can we get it right if Miss Billy Moore don't take the trouble to come to rehearsal? Hey, don't be a kibbit. Who the heck does Billy Moore think she is, keeping us waiting for her? I'll tell you, Mr. Birdie, I don't think she knew there was a rehearsal. She was standing right alongside of me last night when you called her. No, she's gone. Certainly she had. No, she heard it. She was right near me. You're crazy. I said she was gone. Ah, Chris. I don't need no advice that Bauer to the girls come late. Oh, Mr. Verde. As soon as she comes in, as she goes out. Oh, gee, Mr. Verde. It ain't like Billy to fall down on the john. You're going to make one big mistake if you let her out. Why all the talk? You don't work for her. You work for me. Heaven knows I know that. What do you mean? Well, not to pin any bouquets on myself, but where could you get a guy to do what I'm doing for the coffee and cake money you're paying me? You see, it ain't only that I can dance. I got personality. Something else you got, the terrible swell head. What a slave driver that Greek is. I'll say so. Don't he ever get tired razzing us? Personality. Oh, luck. You sure hate yourself. Come on, girls. I'll buy everybody a drink. What? That's the first time I've heard you think since you've been working here. Yeah, well, I worked in nightclubs before. It don't pay to talk too much. I'd like to see anybody stop me from talking. So would I. I got a phone. Uh, Pennsylvania, 5,000. What number, please? Pennsylvania, 5,000. Waiting. Say... Number, please. Pennsylvania, 5,000. Hey, personality. Yeah? You see this? What's that? Look. Oh, a new variety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw the... See the X coming along great. Pennsylvania, 5,000. Ain't you wise that Billy's given you the bum brush? Steve Crandall's got her so dizzy she don't even know you're alive. Oh, Crandall? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 not at all. That's just a buggy ride. I've seen it happen lots of times. Young kids get taken out by a rich guy, everything swell, music, lights. They get Pennsylvania, 5,000. You know what I mean? They get dazzled. Then all of a sudden, they wise themselves up to the fact that the whole works is a lot of baloney. Then suddenly they realize where the real guys in this world is. Yeah, hoping in cabaret. Yeah. yeah. And no kidding, neither. But Billy's ambitious. As soon as I get her ready, we're all set for a lot of nice booking on the big Operator, time. Operator, I want Pennsylvania, 5,000. What? This is a pay telephone to pass the five cents, please. I did give you my nickel. Excuse me, please. Pennsylvania, 5,000. But the act with Billy. Ah, that's a sure thing. Then you're going to see the old name in light. With a big ad in variety, telling them, look who's here. God, I dreamed about it for years. 
Now, good luck, Sam. Um, Pennsylvania Hotel. Listen, I want to speak to Mr. Manuel Pelizar. My gosh. You'll never find a guy with a name like that in a hotel. He's in Ellis Island. Hello. 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 I wonder if that banana gave me a phony name. Well, where have you been? Oh, is Mr. Bertie sore? Well, he was kind of sore until I talked him out of it. Oh, well, I didn't mean to be late off, I didn't. But it was just so wonderful, and the orchestra's playing all the special numbers that he asked me to. And... Oh, so you've been out with that grand old guy. And did he buy you them dandelions? Well, the way on it, Doc. Well, I had promised to Mr. Crandall to go out to dinner with him. And I had to keep my promise, didn't I? Yeah, but you had not to lie about it to me. Say, maybe it's about time I give you a little friendly advice, Billy. Lay off of those big sugar daddies. I've seen a lot of these cabaret spenders, and they're only after one thing. There wasn't anything wrong with me going out with Mr. Crandall. Well, so you did come, eh? But you can say for yourself, don't say it. Of all the nerve I have. Hello, Steve. Glad to see you. Hope I didn't keep Billy away from rehearsal, Nick. Oh, no, no. It didn't make so much a difference. Better go dress. Bye bye, little one. And thanks again for a very pleasant evening. Hey! What's that? Shh. I'll take care of him. Hey, tell me something, will you? Shoot. Why is it that guys like you are never satisfied with the hundreds of Janes that'll do anything you want? All the rummies and bums you can have. But still, you quit them all just to go after the one girl you know is good. Why is it, huh? Do you know some that are good? I know one that's good. Who is that? That's Billy. Where do you get the idea that no one can speak to this more girl but you? Who do you think you are? What can you do for her? I can put her in the Palace Theater in a swell dancing act. Now, she's got looks and a shape. And with my personality... Oh, I see. Your personality. That's what you're going to sell. Well, kid, that's a great idea. But just an idea. Oh, hello, Phil. You coming to my party tonight? Sure, I'm coming to your party. Okay. By the way, I guess I'll have you stick around and do a little clowning for my friends tonight. I'm not asking you to stay on the party, you understand? There won't be dames enough to go around. There's a ten spot in it. Okay. I'll use some of the stuff that I ain't used here yet, seeing you want some laughs. That's the buzzer. I gotta give a show. Hello, Bill. Hello, Porky. Hello, Stevie. Hello. Well, how did it go? Did you get the stuff? Okay, oh, just as you planned it. Any gunplay? No, but Scar's liable to start something. Well, let him start it. I guess I can take care of Scar. Have you sampled the stuff yet? Well, I'll say we have, and it's great. The real produce of Scotland. Well, we ought to be able to sell this truckload of stuff to Nick. Say, he's pretty well stocked up, ain't he? Well, what of it? 
Well, I was only thinking that... I'll do the thinking. Nick will do the buying. He'll do what I tell him to do. Come on. a lot for a very pleasant evening. If I take booze, you hijacked off Scar Edwards. He'll come down here and raise the devil. I'll take care of Scar. But if you fight his mob, I'll get in the neck. Of course. They won't make you no trouble if you keep him below 105th Street. Or roll over. Trade is where you find it. You tell him. But the Edwards gang must shoot things up. They ain't got a monopoly on it, have they? Oh, Nick. <laughs> oh, Steve, you are too quick with a gun. Sometime I get in trouble. Anyhow, it's no good a lot of murders. Very bad for business. Scar might get me read it again. Listen, Nick. You never got poor taking my tips yet. Darn right he didn't. And I wouldn't advise you to change right now. Isn't that, Steve? Listen, Nick. I'm taking Scar's stuff where I can lay my hands on it. And I'm taking his territory. It's business, that's all. Are you with me or not? You've got to declare yourself in or out. All right. Send me what you want. I'll pay for it. Now you got sent. Yeah. This party I'm giving tonight's for the Chicago gang that just blew in. And if Edward's bunch starts anything, they'll be very handy. See? I'm counting on you, Steve. Forty. Huh. You go to the hotel and get the gorilla. Sure. I'm going to check up on the crowd. Got the bracelet. Who owned it? The fence wouldn't tell me. But they say it belonged to one of the classiest mamas in town. Steve. Well, for God's sake. Hello, sweetheart. You got a nerve busting in like this? You don't always knock when you come to visit me. I don't visit you, Scott. You visit my neighborhood sometimes, don't you, see? Do you own it? It all depends on how you look at it. I'm just telling you, Scott. Come gums you in the back way of a strange place, you know, somebody might mistake you for a burglar. No, I ain't scared of you guys. I came down here to have a showdown. Alone. And with no gun. So let's talk, sir. Meaning what? Oh, you know what I mean. You've been poaching on me, Steve. You've been cutting in on my territory, and it's got to stop. Will you listen to that? You own everything above 125th Street, do you? We stock that territory, and we've got a right to it. And nobody, get that? Nobody from down here is going to cut in. And you hijacked another of my trucks last night, didn't you? Well, I'm here to tell you, Steve, you can't get away with it. You're looking for trouble, is that it? From now on, 125th Street is the deadline, get me? Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's just dandy, Scar. And now, if you've spoken your little piece... You can take the air. And I happen to be the guy who can clean up a few murder mysteries in this town. I don't suppose you know who bumped off O'Connell. What are you talking and about? And who dumped his body up in harm so my mob would get blamed for it? What are you driving this at? This is what I'm driving Wait at. Wait a minute. I've waited long enough. Now get this. You guys stay down in your own territory and leave my trucks alone, see? Because I've got the dope on you, see? You croaked, O'Connell. Look here. Take your hands off me. I'll bust your face. You guys can't put me out of business. Oh. <laughs> Get him under the arms, quick. Steve, can you do that? Walk him out of here. Ouch. Wait a minute. Just one of the boys. We're taking him home. Uh, come on, babe. Okay, Doc. Was that a shot? No, that was the band. They just finished the battle number.
Gee, I'm as nervous as the devil tonight.
tells you to bring some good stuff. Oh. Steve, there's a ball out there. Well, what of it? Well, there might be something up. Go home and go to bed. Well, but there might be. Who is it? Dan McCorn. Homicide squad? Uh-huh. What's he doing? He's sitting there, reading a newspaper. I wonder what he wants. Be quiet. Sit down. But, Steve, be quiet. I want to think. Gee, the orchestra sure put that number on the frets. A bunch of plumbers. They're off their feet like a night watchman. Hey, Billy. You were pretty good tonight. After a while, you'll be as good as I am. Then we'll tie the merry old can to this nightclub stuff, eh, kid? Well, I suppose so. What do you mean, I suppose so? Well, maybe says not to count on it. It's a pipe dream. Oh, yeah? Well, pretty soon we'll be copping out 700 a week. 200 for you and 500 for me, if they call that a pipe dream. Well, I hope it comes true. Just as true as if I was standing here handing you the money right now. Hey, Billy. You're still strong for the act, ain't you? Sure, why not? Well, you've been going out with this Crandall guy an awful lot here lately. Well, well, I don't think I ought to miss wonderful opportunities. I mean, I don't think I ought to miss a chance to go out with a big man like Mr. Crandall. Or not to miss a chance to go out with me, neither. Well, of course, you're different. Yeah, I'll say I am. Bye-bye, little one. Thanks an awful lot for a very pleasant evening. Ah, that's the parrot's cracker, that stuff. Well, Mr. Crandall has been very nice to me. I don't like him interfering with our act, that's all. He isn't. I'll rehearse any time you say. Well, then, supposing we go out tonight after the show. Tie on the feed bag and talk over the act, huh? Oh, but tonight... Oh, I remember. Tonight's your night to go home and see your old lady in it. Well, I thought maybe I, I ought to stay to Mr. Crandall's party. Can't they get soused without you? Say, Billy, tell me something, will you? Sure. Are you falling for this Crandall guy? Why, the very idea... Why, Mr. Crandall just considers me like a friend or, or just sort of a pal. Oh, I suppose he's going to adopt you. It's your career I'm thinking of, that's all. Who is that all? I thought perhaps you might be thinking about me. Well, I do take a personal interest in you, too. After all, we're going to be partners, ain't we? Sure, on the stage. Billy... We can't let nothing stand in our way. I see our names in lights right now. Roy Lane and company. Oh, there's a bunch of... Come on, scram. We got a minute. Oh, little fella. Come on down. You better hurry up, Billy. I'll be right up, Roy. Listen, cute fella. I want to ask you a favor. Why, Mr. Crandall, of course. I want you to forget that you saw Dolph and me helping that drunken fella out of here a little while ago. What drunken fella? Oh, I know. Out there. I remember. You see, he's a big politician. And if it got out he was drunk, it might cause a lot of trouble. You know? Oh, I wouldn't say anything. I can count on you, then. Positively. Wait a minute. Guess what? Why, Mr. Crandall, how should I know? A birthday present. For you. Oh, but, see, Mr. Crandall, I've had my birthday. <laughs> Be smart. Have two of them. Oh, Steve. Oh, I never said anything. Oh, why, Mr. Crandall, it's beautiful. I'm glad you like it. Oh, but... But I couldn't take it. Now, don't give me any of that silly talk. Why, it's just a trinket. It doesn't amount to anything. Hey, B. 
Billy, come on. You've got to get dressed. Oh, I forgot. I gotta go. Bye bye. 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 You tell Joe I said make it snappy. See? Now go. You sting me? Oh. Hello, Dan. What do you want in here? Oh, I just dropped in. How's business, Nick? Can't complain. Now, don't think I'm shaky, but Steve, you still got that rod on you. Let me get rid of it. Oh, shut up. Who do you think I am, Johnny the Dope? Should I have my pocket sewed up because there's a bull outside? Go on, beat it. Oh. Hello. Hello. Well, well. Good old Dan McCorn. How's business, Steve? So-so? Extending trade a little, ain't you? How do you mean? Kind of moving uptown. Above 125th Street. Say, Dan, do you suppose for that one minute... you can't peddle it where you please? No, I don't mean that. But ain't it likely to cause trouble? Trouble? There's a bad bunch up there. Some of them two-turn men. Ah, some of them gorillas of a Steve ain't such a sweet bunch either. That's what I say. That's why it looks like fireworks. By the way, Steve, seen Scar Edwards lately? About two weeks ago I saw him. At the races? Yeah. Then you didn't see him when he was here tonight. Huh? Here? Who? You didn't, Steve, huh? Watch your shooting in your arm, Dan. It's all swollen. Scar Edwards was here, wasn't he? Listen, Dan. Scar and me is personal friends. But we don't do business together. Maybe that's why he came. Ah, uh, he wouldn't come to my place. He was in the neighborhood anyway. That much I know because I saw him myself. You saw him? Where? Under a blanket in a Westcott Express truck just a block and a half from here. Lying on his face with a slug in his back. Oh, for the Lord! Well, they got him, eh? Well, that's too bad. You know, Scar wasn't a bad sort when you knew him. I hope to tell you. And the funny part of it is, he didn't have a rod on him either. Well, that's a tough break. What time did it happen? Oh, say, 20 minutes, a half past 10. Well, I've been here all evening. Ain't I, Nick? Well, I didn't ask you for an alibi, but since you mention it, let's have it. Who was with you? What, Porky? Nick was here part of the time. And Billy Moore, too. One of the girls. You can ask any of them. They all saw me. Go on. And when Porky came in, I happened to ask him if he had the correct time. Oh, you didn't have a watch then? Sure. But I wanted to see if it was right. And when he told you, you knew you were right. Is that it? Say, listen, Dan. Where do you get off to sweat me? What's wrong? What's the matter? <coughs> Somebody killed the Scar Edward. Well, well. Oh, that's too bad. Say, you guys ain't thinking of gone in mourning, are you? How are the girls, Lee? Oh, fine, Dan. Huh. You keep your eyes open, huh? Come. Let's see what they're doing. Now, 
Now, threat some pesky, understand? And for God's sake, remember. Smile to the men. Shoot the teeth. Say, it's a nice bunch you got there, Nick. <laughs> Would you like to meet some of them, huh? That uh, brunette over there kind of appeals to me. Uh, oh. I want you to be nice to my old friend, Emma Corn, here. Hiya. Seems to me I've seen you someplace before. That's an old one. On the level. You used to dance up at the Golden Bowl, didn't you? <clears throat> Not me. No? That's all right, Nick. I guess I'll run along about my business. Sorry to have took so much of your time. Oh, that's all right, Dan. Glad to give you all the time we got. Sorry couldn't have been a more help. Well, so long. Lucky, take a stroll out. Where'd you get it? Some rock. Oh, boy, when did he give it to you? Well, Hoofer, I guess you'll be looking for a new partner. What? Steve gave it to her. And you going to keep it? Certainly she's going to keep it. Oh, Billy, don't be a fool. You know what all the people will be saying about you. Don't tell me what to do. I tell you to give it back to him. Listen, General Pershing. Hey, hey, you do as I say. You mind your own business. Oh, please, Billy. I'm just telling you something straight from the heart. Say, what are you doing here? Having a hot talk instead of doing a number? No, sir, Mr. Bernie. I'm right here waiting to do my stuff. Nobody can tell you that I don't give my customers 100% every performance. The night my old man died, I went on at the Regent Theater in Danbury. And I gave one of the best performances I ever gave in my life. And even if it's Jane, I'd pin all my hopes and faith on was going to hell. I'd still go on and do my best. Line up, kids. Now remember, this is the cue. Cut them deep and let them bleed. Makes you so jumpy every time somebody gets bumped off. Steve, I think McCorn is all set to make a pitch. Say, Steve, tell me on the square. You know who done it, don't you? I haven't the faintest idea. But you know it ain't healthy for you around here after Scar's been killed, don't you? A gang killing's no novelty in this burg. The cops will be glad to get him out of the deck. But Steve, you done it, didn't you? Me and the deceased were great friends. We'll spare no expense in making this the biggest funeral the town ever saw. Flowers, everything. It'll be the event of the season. A big success. But, Steve, you talk like it's going to be his wedding. Well, there ain't much difference. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Again. I'll tie your shoe. Get thumbs up. Hey, Pearl. Oh, thanks. All right, Weisenheimer. Oh, there you are. What's the matter? Don't you like it? Oh, of course I do. I think it's lovely. Well, if you don't like it, I'll take it back to Tiffany's and have it changed. Well, I'm just crazy about it, but... But what, cute fella? Well, the girls all said that if I took a present like that from a rich man like you, then people would say that... Well, that I belong to you. I don't mind if they do say that. Oh, but I do. Oh, I suppose I shouldn't let you take me out at all, Mr. Crandall. Because I know it sounds silly, but I'm not that kind of a girl, I suppose. Maybe that's why I like you. Oh, I know there's nothing wonderful about being the way I am. I mean, about being a good girl. And I, and I don't think it's fair for me to keep your bracelet because, well, that's the way I am. Listen, baby. Have I ever pulled any rust off? No, you haven't, and that's what I always... I'm crazy about you. Honest, no fooling. Don't listen to what they say, Kitty. I'll take care of you. Silly! Maisie wants to see you right away. Excuse me. Listen, actor. Did anyone ever suck you right on the nose? Yeah. Come to think of it twice. Why? Well, how would you like to have it happen again? Why, what did I ever do to you? Nothing. You couldn't. Forget it. I was a sucker to get sore. Hey, oil can. What is this? She never said she wanted me at all. You had no right to say that, Roy Lane. Steve Crandall's no fit companion for Billy, and from now on, I'm going to make it my business to see that he don't have nothing to do with her. Where's your wing? Roy, it seems to me that you're taking an awful lot for granted without consulting anybody. Steve's a swell fellow. He's just out with some innocent fun. Says you. Says I. Just staying up all night running wild and drinking a lot of poison don't get anybody anywhere. I'm no prude. I'm for light wines and beer. But if a girl wants to get ahead in this racket, she shouldn't start a career by partying around with a lot of roughnecks. And in the second place, you're going to give back that bracelet. Give it back? Ha <laughs> ha. Now I'll tell one. Why, she could get 500 for it and hunk. Say, listen, small time. This little novice has got a chance to cop off a millionaire if she plays her point. You gonna stand around and try to gum it? Well, if there's any thought of him getting by with that marriage stuff, it's time for me to do something definite. Sure it is. Bow yourself out of the picture. I want to talk to Billy about something perfectly private. Will you kindly leave us? Oh, Roy, I wish you wouldn't be back in that way. I guess you know pretty well that I'm strong for you. Only I ain't said nothing about it on account of my old man just died here recently. But since this big four-flusher, Steve Crandall, is talking about a wedding ring, it's time I played my ace. Listen, honey, how about getting hitched up? Roy, I don't know. It'd be better for the act, wouldn't it? Well, I never thought much about it. Gee, I don't know what to say. Oh, well, take your time. I know it kind of sudden and all that. Only I thought you were kind of wise as to how I felt anyhow. I don't know what to say. Oh, God knows I'm for you. And if you'll just say the word that you're for me, well, I won't let out no yells or nothing like that, but I'd sure feel like doing just that little thing. Well, well Roy, uh, of course I'd have to think a thing like this over. And... When you see me coming to say hello to you in the morning, don't your heart never beat no faster? Oh, yes, it does. That's it. That's what they call love at first sight. That's wonderful. I feel the same way. Well, Roy, I don't think we ought to talk about marrying when... Well, when we're so poor. Oh! 
You want a rich guy. Oh, I didn't say that. You're a gold digger. Oh, I'm not, I'm not. But I don't want to be foolish to say that I'd be sorry for afterwards. All I say is that, well, that I should think a thing like this over. Yeah, go on upstairs and think it over. Don't you talk to me that way or I never will marry you. Sure. Talk it over with you next week. And what's more, I'm going to stay to Mr. Crandall's party just to show you. Long distance. This is Long distance. Long distance. I want to get Trenton, New Jersey. I'm at the Capitol Theater there, and I want to talk to one of the Maloney brothers. Maloney brothers? No, not baloney. Maloney. How do you spell the name, please? M-A-L-O-N-E-Y. M. M as in matrimony. Thank you. What's that sap done now? That guy. Oh, Maisie, oh, I hate him. Oh, cut it out, kid. Don't let him see you've been crying. Hello? Hello, hello, babe. Yeah, that's you, Roy? Yeah, yeah, babe. Hey, how's the act going? Oh, great. Says I got us open in the show, but that ain't so hot, though. Oh, well, don't bother about that. Don't mind that a bit. Say, listen, babe, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Now, look, I want you to do me a big favor. Oh, sure, Roy, anything you say. Listen, baby, you got a pencil? All right. Now, get me. I want you to send a telegram for me. I get you. Now, babe. Yeah. The telegram has got to go from Trenton tonight. Okay, babe. You're a lifesaver. Thanks. I'll do as much for you sometime. That's all right. So long. So long. Say, Roy. Yeah. Have you been extra sweet to me since I've been around here? Let me tip you off to something. Don't monkey with that Crandall fellow. You might get hurt. Oh, him? I'll see him in Sing Sing before I'm through with him. Say, you know what I think he really is? What? A bootlegger. No. Yes. You don't say so. You bet I do. Uh... You wait and see if I ain't right. Party, who's yelling about? Oh, Billy said. She would. Well, I guess one party will spoil it. Come in to take the spoil you. You ought to know. I saw you at the first. Yeah. Cut it out, cut it out. Come on, there's our entrance. <laughs> Reading, writing, arithmetic, I want you to learn in school. The only way to learn them quick is study like a fool. You later go to college, so nothing you will miss. But even when you graduate, you'll never answer this. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The egg or the chicken or the chicken or the egg? All my life I've been in doubt. Which was the first one to come up? Please won't someone answer me. On my knees I beg. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The egg or the chicken or the chicken or the egg? Hello. All right, never mind. Hello. Did you get my note all right? Sure. Was you going to telephone? Nothing important. Positive? Didn't I tell you? I got to get ready for my number. I won't keep you long. Seen Scar Edwards lately? What? Have you? Say, what's the big idea? 
You know who I am? Sure, you're a cop. Well, I know who you are, too. You're the gal I'd seen palling around with Scar Edwards when you were dancing up at the Golden Bowl. You never saw me. Oh, yes, I did. Didn't I? Well, it's no crime, is it? Not exactly. Are you on the outs with Scar? No. And if it's all the same to you, would you mind calling him Jim? Excuse me. You're keeping tabs on this bunch for Scar. I mean, Jim. Ain't that right? Yeah, the lot of dirty skunks. They wouldn't stop at nothing. The Jim Edwards trust you, eh? Sure. We're going to be married. Too bad. What is? Say, has he done something you want him for? No, no, I haven't got a thing on him, lady. Well, tell me straight. Has anything happened? You act so kind of funny. You got to finish your show tonight, singing everything? Well, sure, I go on again. Well, I won't take up any more of your time then. I just wanted to know if you'd seen Edwards tonight. No, I ain't seen him since breakfast, but... Well, I don't know why I shouldn't tell you. He told me he was coming down here tonight to have a showdown with Steve. Oh, he told you that... Well, I guess I'll run along about my business. Thanks, Mrs. Edwards. In three weeks. You'll keep this under your hat, won't you? If I want to get out of here with all my neck, I will. All you gotta say, is it? Yes. And I just went and telegraphed my mother that I wouldn't be home tonight. Because I'm staying to Mr. Crandall's party. Then now listen. If it's just to spite me you're doing this, I'll eat mud. Well, it's not only that. 
It's because I promised to. I have an obligation. Listen, partner. I've been your pal anyhow. And that gives me some right to talk to you. Who have you got the greatest obligation to? A big rounder like Steve Crandall who ain't got no respect for pure womanhood? Or your poor old gray-haired mother? Well, if you don't think I've got enough character to be decent at a party, you better find somebody you've got confidence in. Ah, for the love of... Think of all the plans we made, Billy. Don't be a dumbbell. I'm not. And I'll say now, for no other reason, to show you good and proper that I don't belong to you. Well, if you did, I'd spank you. <laughs> say, and furthermore, if I catch you inhaling any of that poison up there, I'll spank you before the whole mob. Then I would be finished with you. I don't care if I never hear you speak to me again as long as I live. I got to do my duty by my partner, that's all. First, the artist, that's me. Second, the human being. I've done everything I could to appeal to your better instincts. There's nothing up the sleeve as far as I'm concerned. So, if you want to be sore, I guess that towel will have to be. That's all. All right, now you got to come on, will you? Come on now. <laughs> I know you, man. No, I'm a telling you, if a woman's got sense, I never see her, Nate. Ain't you the compass? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Got a light? Sure. What are you shaking about? Well, I'm not shaking. Look at your hand. Oh, but that's the way I always do. When the cops are on? No. When I'm in love. Were you ever accused of murder? Now, listen, Dan... Don't get me wrong. Uh, that ain't my line. What's the idea, Dan? If you think that someone around here has something to do with this Scar Rivers business, go ahead and make your pinch. But don't stand around and make a coroner's inquest out of the place. I got a party here tonight. Now, listen here, sweetheart. Why get excited? It's my business to ask questions, isn't it? Sure, you're right. You see, whether a fellow shoots square or not, according to the law, ain't always this. But no matter what he's done to me, he should have a break. And somebody shot this guy in the back. Well, that's a pretty sentiment, Mac. But why get all steamed up? Because a nuisance like Scar Edwards gets bumped off. Oh, what? Oh, what's the matter? What's Have the matter? Oh, but dear, you must have. Oh, I'm all right. What is it, Pearl? I tell you, I'm all right. Gee, Christmas kid. What did you do? I stepped on the stairs, that's all. I thought you fainted. Fainted for what? I twisted my ankle, I tell you. Are you sure you're all right? Sure, I'm all right. Well, girls, you all set for a big night? I'll show you. Yeah. See these hundred dollar bills? Will you each get one? Oh, 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 no, one at a time. One at a time. No, I'll tell you how we'll do it. No, I'll tell you how we'll do it. We'll take them and tear them in half. Oh, yeah. And oh. each girl gets oh, a bit. Oh, my God. And if your nice babies when the party's over, I pack on the other half. Oh, Bam. you give it mine now. You give it mine now. No, no, no. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get Oh, Pearl. Here's yours. And if you make good, you get the other half. Don't worry. I'll make good, all right. Add a baby. I can't give you anything but I'm the only thing. 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 I
Come on, baby. Drink up. What's the matter, baby? Ain't you drinking? No, not not tonight. Well, I am. Oh, hello, Dolph. Why are you not with the girls? I guess I might as well. Sure, come on. Excuse me, baby. What do you suppose he's hanging around tonight for, Steve? He's got nothing on us. You ought to let me ditch that rod. I'm telling you. Oh, what, Christ? Will you shut up? It's all right, little fella. Don't worry. Everything's all right. Oh, but Steve, what'll I do? I won't let nobody bother you. I love you, little fella. I love you. I do murder for you. Oh, oh, Steve, please don't. All right, I'm sorry. Listen, tomorrow night after the show, let's get in my car and take a ride and have a good talk, will you? All right. Isn't it crazy? Well, go ahead and open it. It can't talk, so you got to read it. What's the matter, kid? It ain't bad news. Let me see. Oh, it's Mama. Oh, Maisie, just think I'm acting this way, and maybe she's dying. Oh, Roy. Why, what is it? Billy just got bad news about her mother. Oh, everything's all right, kid. Everything's all right now. You're amongst friends. We'll take care of you. There, there, honey. I want to go home. Well, sure, and I'm right here to take care of you. Now, you stop crying, and we'll get out of here fast. Oh, you're so good to me, Roy. You bet I'm good to you. Now, you hurry into your traps. We'll be on a train for Trenton in 25 minutes. Go ahead, now. (laughs) What's the matter? Billy just got word from home. My mother's sick. I'm awfully sorry. Why, that's all right, little fellow. My car's out back. I'll have you home in no time at all. You needn't bother, Mr. Crandall. Everything is all arranged. See? Everything is all arranged, isn't it? Telegram. Well, I don't understand. Oh, here, let me see. What does it say, Maisie? Your wily Steve. Stay at party and have good time, mother. She must have got better. No, ain't that peculiar? Well, the best thing would be to start now and see for sure. Come on, Billy. No, there's no need for Billy going home. Well, it seems to me the wisest thing to do. She'll stay right here. And you too, Lane. You can do your clowning. Say, this last wire is an answer to Billy. And the one before was an answer to something else. 
I'll bet my winter underwear the boy scout here is in on this. Are you full of chest? Oh, you're a light on your nose. Oh, so you framed a wire on it. What kind of picture are you, man? Oh, you're a man. Don't pay any attention to any of them. I don't want to see what's going on. Anything I've done, I guess I know if I've done it. Oh, you did, you did. Oh, it's the dirtiest trick anybody could ever do. Oh, Billy, listen. I won't listen to you. I don't want anything to do with you. You, oh, you, you big sap. Now, ain't you the smart guy? Oh, I've done it for you. Well, I guess I know this kind of a guy. He's just out to grab you, and he don't care what means he uses. Fuck. Come on, girl. I want to tell you a big time story. Now, come on with me. Oh, Billy. Let's have a picture. 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 Let's have Look out for this one. Jesus. Jesus. Look out for this Now, I guess you'll leave me be. Not a boy. Little argument there, that's all. A little argument, eh? So little you use this. Well, that ain't mine. No, who's is it then? It's his all right. He put it on me just now. Oh, you're a big liar. Lie yourself, lady. You'll so you do it. Have you got a permit to carry this? Uh, of course not. I'm the chief performer here, mister. Roy Lane. You ever hear of the spell of a night? Spell of a night? What time is it playing? The son of an act is the law. You get plenty of time to carry one of these. Well, tell me that ain't mine. No. Then I'll keep it until we find out who owns it. You come along with me. He's stolen. He wants that gun. Who is this mug? He's a dick. What's the answer? Yeah, you yeah, right. Listen, Dan. Give the kid back his gas. I can settle my arguments with him. So, these are your friends from Chicago, eh, Steve? Listen, Dan. What are you trying to do? Call it a day. Give the kid back his cap pistol. I'll settle my arguments with him myself. I said I'd keep the gun. Not a chance of getting anyone back, you won't. Right. Give it up while you're able and take the ozone. You're a fine, ungrateful guy for the finish, I'd say that, Steve. You know, Scarlett is just bumped off, don't you? You know, as soon as his mom heard it, they got together, didn't they? And who would they be looking for? For you. So I phoned over the house to get seven of the boys to wait on the outside in case any of that mother's car shows up. You did that, then? Just to protect you. The three of my men wasting good time out back there now. It's my business to ask questions, isn't it? They don't mean to say I suspect you. Well, I suspect him. Shut him up. I saw him and that guy helping a fellow with a scar on his face out of the back door there tonight. You're right there. Wait a minute, Steve. Take it easy. And if you don't believe me, ask Billy Moore. She saw it too. And she'd never tell nothing but the truth. Ask her. Curtis, bring in the mall girl. Sure. Ask her. Go ahead, Nick. Miss Moore, tonight before the show started, did you see Steve and that gentleman over there help a drunken man out of the back door? Why? Tell the truth, Billy. Did you? A man with a scar on his face? Why, no, I didn't. So I told you? Did any of you see Scar here tonight? Oh, I me all the time. I didn't see him. Now are you satisfied? Yeah. Hey, Copper, take personality out with you before he makes more trouble around here. Is that all you want? That's all just now. Come on, Lane. I'll tell you some more about the Sullivan. Oh, you can't take me like this, officer. Who's going to stay and take care of Billy? You don't know what kind he is. Come on, dear. No, I had an alien camp. She got to get you. You don't know what it's all about. And that guy's out to grab her. Go on, take him out, then. Oh, listen. I'll kill you. I'll kill you if you touch her. So help me out. Kill you. Well, somebody, will somebody do something silly? Come on, Come on, Come on,
cops could see he didn't have no sense. That he was just a false alarm, so they threw him out. Then why don't Lane come back to work? I got to give a show tonight. Half of my accident turn up. That's tough, ain't it? Billy Moore's here, ain't she? Yeah. That's a lot of help, ain't it? Uh, take it away. Just where's your late? For what? For work. He's off, Greek. You don't suppose I come back to this bucket of blood to work, do you? Why not? After the raw deal I got last night? Me keep on working in this shooting gallery? <laughs> Listen, Lane. You've got to work. Just tonight. What a chance. Paint for me, I to say. I can get another hoofer. It's because of the people who come here expressly to see you, see? What? Sure. Already big party comes in. They say, uh, how long before the young fellow comes on with the wonderful personality? Now, hey, wait a minute. You say that, uh... What kind of looking people? <laughs> I don't know they was. They're very important people. I said, uh, Mr. Lane, he ain't here yet, but he should come. Because he don't never disappoint his public. I never disappoint my public yet. That's what I said. I told him about that time in Danbury, Massachusetts. That you're a great artist and no matter what happens, I could all depend on you for the very best that seen you. Listen, I'll go on tonight. Good. But I'm leaving at the end of the week. I knew I could count on you, Lane. Now I'll go out and see what I can do about fixing your show for tonight. Lila ain't here. Nobody. Oh, Roy. Oh, I'm terribly glad you didn't get hurt or anything. Sure. See you again sometime. Oh, well, I don't think that's a very nice way to act. All I said is I'm glad you didn't get hurt or anything. Well, no, thanks to you, I didn't. Well, everything had been all right if you hadn't tried to boss me. Okay. I'm done trying to boss you. Only I'm kind of sorry on account of the act, that's all. Well, what do you mean? On account of the act being busted up, I mean. Oh, is it busted? Sure. Oh. Of course, when a guy's worked hard trying to get the best dancing act in the business in shape, he kind of hates to see it go bluey when some big stiff that's rancid with coin comes along and cops his partner. What right have you got to say to Steve's cop me? Last night, you lied to save him. And against me. Oh, yes, but I didn't know. And you have no right to talk to me that way. All the girls around here are always saying I'm too good. And you're saying I'm too bad. Oh, I hate this darn place. Now, there's another thing, too. Last night, you called me a big sap in the presence of several witnesses. Oh, shut up. That's just what you are. And I'll tell you something else. Last night, when I went home all alone, I asked my mother if the girl was terribly in love with a person... So much was just like love at first sight. Was it all right to marry him, even if they was poor? Now, how would you like to go to the devil? Hello. I I told you this was the place. I've been looking for you, Lil. I was looking for you to shake hands, Nick, and guess who I am? Minus two, that's who you are. Where have you been? What's happened to you? Almost everything. We're married. For the love of... Go upstairs and lie down. I'll take your fork in my office. You haven't got a thing on your hip, have you? Not what a first mark, and you're the first guy that ever asked me about it. Go upstairs. I'll send Joe some black coffee. I believe he's mad at me. Someone took a shot. 
shot him if not can. We're on the back way to Nick's. Quick. Come on, step on it. I'm married. Then how? Jeez, what a night. Get off the alley and watch. If you see anything suspicious, let me know. Gee, Steve, I don't want to get... Do as I tell you. All right. Evening, Mr. Crandall. Hello, Joe. I'm not here to anyone tonight. Get that. Thomas Scar Edwards' playmates might want to crash in looking for trouble. And tip me if you see Dan McCorn or any other dick blow in. I'm here. Tell Miss Moore I want to see her down here. Thanks, Mr. Crandall. Feel as well as I could. No. Look at the lid. Uh huh. Look at the hole. Sure, I see. See, get it? Bullet. When? A few minutes ago, coming down Broadway. Traffic stops me. Car drives up alongside him. <laughs> right through the hat. There wasn't even a sound. Oh. A taxi drives up alongside of my car, but there was no longer a woman in it. A hey, woman? Yeah, but she couldn't have done it. I don't think. Some of Scar Edwards' mob, I guess. Mm, that's bad, Steve. Extra bad. If I'm in slower, it'd have been a lot worse. I'm glad I planned to get out of here when I did. If you didn't croak Scar Edwards, what's you blowing for? I'll make my plans without your help, Nick. Sure. Taking uh, Billy with you? I'm taking her all right, but she doesn't know it yet, so don't advertise. Gee, Steve, you've got to be careful about... You stay here, Nick. Hello, beautiful. You look sweet as sugar tonight. How's tricks? You're awfully nice not to get mad at me for running away home last night. Well, I'll tell you, little fella. Anytime I'm not nice, you remind me I'll get nice. You know, you're going for a ride with me tonight. Why? I, I don't know. That was a promise. You wouldn't try to go back on that. Oh, there's the buggy. Yes, but you did promise. Now, don't forget that. Why, no, of course. No, I wouldn't go back on my promise, no, but... No, all we'll do is just get in the car and get it run up the post road and get something to eat there. Oh, well, I'd rather not. Please just talk to the road. Oh, hello, Steve. Hello, Maisie. Don't forget now. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt you. Brian, what can you do? Well, that's all right. Well, if it ain't God's little gift to the nightclub. Oh, 
I'm not going to believe she's going out to see her mother. If I ever seen a professional virgin, she's there. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, 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 Nick, that's, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. You can't go out there fighting like that. I don't want my stuff spoiled. I got friends out there every night, agents and managers and producers. Oh, excuse me. I'm not used to working with these headline acts. Oh, that's it. Oh, is that so? Well, come on, get it. That's all you Come on. Let's unravel another day. Oh, get it out Hey, cut it out there. Get in line before I break you one. Love him. Come on, get up, Porky. Porky. Well, Andrew, if you please. Come, Andrew. Take my arm. And keep the heck off my face. I think I'm married. Oh, um, jeez, wait. Oh, What you do? Hey, Steve. What the devil is the matter with you? You here for a have you? McCoy? No. Why? Uh, you want to see him? That's the last thing I want to do. A guy like that gets on my nerves. He don't say nothing, he don't make no accusations. But that rotten, quiet way he's got to talk, and that dirty smile kind of... You know, it kind of makes you ragged. But he ain't got nothing on me. Not a thing. Well, sure he ain't, Steve. Then why get excited? Well, if he comes stooping around tonight, I ain't here. See? Hey, uh, Lane? Listen. Lil ain't able to work. I have been thinking. How would you like to break in your act to the villa? No. The act is all split up. It's off. All busted up. Listen, you've been talking about rehearsing and everything. Now give it a chance. I'd like to do it for you. I'm sorry, but I ain't got no partner. But the man won't work. Well, I didn't say I wouldn't. Oh, he doesn't want me anymore. Come on. I ask as a special favor. It's a chance for you. I'll give the agent a good report no matter how rotten it is. Come on, like a good fellow. Maybe I'll have a sign fixed with your name in light, huh? I'll beg a sign. I'll tell you after the act. Oh, all right. As long as Miss Moore wants to, I'm willing just to keep the show going. Fine. I'll tell the leader. He's got your music, ain't he? Can we go out to the tables and watch him, Mr. Verdi? Sure, go ahead. But you better make a quick change first. We'll do the Broadway number after that, see? Oh, Roy. Had your big chances come? Yeah, I guess so. But when I get a throwdown like I got last night, I get wise to myself. Well, when I get a throwdown like I just got today, I'm wise <clears throat> to myself, too. Yeah, a couple can be in the same act without being crazy about each other. Okay, but I'm the kind of a guy that, well, I just don't want to butt in where I ain't wanted, that's all. Swiss cheese on rye. Oh, Dan, what do you want in here? I just dropped in to say hello. Steve around? No, I haven't seen him all day. He'll be in later, though, won't he? Oh, no, he won't come tonight. He had us a big enough last night, you understand? Why, uh, you want to see him right away? Nothing important. There'll be lots of other chances. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, I'll see you some more, huh? All right, Nick. Steve. What corn's out there? What corn? What does he want? Nothing important, it says. Just ask for you. I said you wasn't here like you told me. Say, 
say, listen, what the devil's the matter with you? I don't get this business at all, Steve. Soon as some of the mentions Dick McCorning up in the air. Now, what's the reason for this? Oh, I'm all shot, I guess. Too much booze last night. And a lot of other things. But Steve, McCorning... That bull McCorn's getting too curious. He thinks some of my mob got Scar Edwards. Did they? No, they didn't. Listen, Nick. I can trust you. Send someone over to Charlie's to get his car. Not mine. They know mine. And put it out in back of the alley where I can get it. Then after the show, I can take Billy Moore and a couple of bros and get in the car and go for a ride. If they trail me, I can lose them up on the post road. Then later I can get rid of the ones I don't want. Mm. You go to lots of troubles adjusted because a dick is asking questions. What's the matter, Steve? Where's your gut? Oh, you think I'm yellow, huh? Well, I don't want no one thinking that. Listen, Nick. I done that job myself. No, Steve! It's all right. They ain't got nothing on me. Nothing. Only that gun. It's getting on my nerves. I'm all ragged. I want to get away from here. Just remember your routine. That's all you got to do. Well, let's rehearse the finish. You know, that's what we've got mixed up in the last rehearsal. Oh, shoot it, boy. Will you help me? And just follow me out of the corner of your eye, and you can't go wrong. There. Oh, well, the last time we did it this way. I know, but it kind of spoiled it for me. Thinking you might have had your arms around Steve Crandall that way. Oh, but I haven't. And when I lied last night about that drunken man, well, it was just because I had promised Steve to say that. And I went home alone, too. All right, we'll do the finish the old way. Oh, Billy, you remember what you asked your mother? About marrying the poor fellow? Yeah. Well, oh, there goes the buzzer. Oh, oh, Roy, I'm scared. Oh, well, listen, now, don't be scared. Remember, I'm right alongside of you, and it'll all be over before you can think about it. Oh, remember, I'm going to announce you. Now, some pep in the sense. Good luck, little fellow. Oh, thanks, to Mr. Crandall. Oh, oh, Roy, I don't believe I can go on. Well, can't we wait till tomorrow until we have another chance to rehearse? Oh, next, I don't want any stage fright coming up our act, see? Ladies and gentlemen. Listen. It is my greatest pleasure to announce the sensational newcomer, Roy Lane and Company. And don't that make you feel proud? I don't want to go out there. Listen, you're not going to throw me down now. Oh, I know, but I'm scared. Well, there's our music. Oh, Roy, please, let's wait. I'm going to suck you right in the nose. Now, come on. We all know the power of song. 
It can right most any wrong. It can cheer us when we're broken hearted. But the greatest song we sing is a love song that can bring a one near us even though we're parted. Sing a little love song when the skies are gray. Any little love song drives the clouds away. As an inspiration, watch the birds above. You find consolation in that song of love. What good are riches and gold when love is true? We know from stories of old just what a song. A little love song, sorrow will depart. Keep a little love song ringing in your Listen, Dad, you're a nice fellow and everything. But every time you come into my cabaret, about 20 people goes out. Scramble in there. I told you he ain't here. Now, listen. You gay Miss Ford, understand? I'll tell you Steve ain't here. And you can't go snooping around my place. And you look here. I've been pretty nice to you in a lot of ways. Do you get this? You don't want to be accused of helping a guy who's wanted for murder, do you? No, but I have... Well, listen to me before you do any more for Steve Cranley. I want to speak to him. After that, you can do as you please. I tell you, he ain't here. I don't know. Steve Cranley's here. Come on. Where is he? Where is he? He ain't here, I tell you. But you can look. Oh, Roy... I did my best, honest, I did. Sure you did, kid. It ain't your fault. It's just a break, that's all. Sure, it was tough, all right. And you was going swell, too, Billy. Who do you think they won? Sure. 
You'd be a riot in the palace. Well, there goes the buzzer. We gotta hustle now. Remember, the next number is the Broadway number. Now, where's Steve? Tell him I want to see him. such a gang of hoodlums in all my life. You give them the best stuff that you can gather anywhere, and I made most of it. God. Huh? For me? Yeah. Get out. Oh, look, Billy. Look what Mike Shea has to say. He just caught the act. Who's Mike Shea? One of the biggest booking agents in New York. Oh, I never heard of it. Listen to what he has to say. I can offer you and partner... Chambersburg and Pottsville next week. Oh, Billy. <laughs> Chambersburg Billy. and Pottsville. Gee, you must love this guy. Oh, I sure do. Well, I've been so busy getting the act together. I ain't had a chance to tell you how much I love you. But here goes. Oh, he's not on time. Stop it. We've got to carry out. You understand? Sure. Well, come on, girls. Jay, I see our names in lights right now. Roy Lane and company. Remember, we're all artists. Here we go. I 
But it'll fly, it'll fly, and I, and I was watching and thinking, my eyes started blinking. I wondered what the fly was trying to do. He never lit a bit, he hit and hit the window, the curtain, and that made me certain that you and I, just like the fly, should find some flying too. Hitting the ceiling, hitting the ceiling. 